Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today it's going to be more of an art video than a craft video because a lot of my followers on Instagram have been requesting me to do a tutorial for these watercolor roses that I have been painting and posting on my Instagram account. So today I thought I will give an in-depth tutorial on how to paint these watercolor roses. I have already done a lot of homework uh, right here to explain to you guys how I actually go about with the process step by step. So uh, before starting, I'd like to show you what all supplies I'm going to use today. We'll be using watercolor paper. This is most most essential. This is watercolor paper, 300 GSM, 100% cotton and this is machine cold pressed. Then I'm going to use the Odyssey and uh, Classics palette from Art Philosophy. These are my favorite palettes when it comes to painting. And then I'll be using two brushes. One is a silver brush, black velvet brush size 4 and another one for detailing. I'll also be using a little bit bigger brush for uh, leaves of the roses, the size 8. So, um, Plus, you obviously need some water and some rag cloth to wipe your brush off. So, uh, let's get started, right? Fine, so before we start, i just like to show you the anatomy of a uh, rose that we'll be going to paint today. So, I have kind of, uh, you know, drawn it out here. It's going to be more like, uh, how do I say, uh, something at the center right here. Okay, it's going to be a lot of uh, closely knit petals not knit kept petals right here this is like the bud which is yet to unfold this area next to that will be the petals that have unfurled a bit so what we have to make sure while we paint is that our petals have to go in this shape okay so one petal is this way then the other will start from here and it will encircle it from the outside so this is going to be how our petals are going to look so if this is the outline right over here the petal is going to unfurl okay and this is the inner portion and here it's going to unfurl and then cover it right here okay so this is how our petals are going to look and again over it over this the next petal is going to come right here likewise and all of these have to be in circular shapes okay so once it becomes oval the flower is not going to look pretty it's going to look very um, lopsided sort of so you have to make sure that all these come in concentric circles right so this is basically the thing that we're going to do but in layers because in one layer you're going to have a lot of gaps here which you need to fill then you need to add highlights then you need to add a bit more shadows to these spaces the ones which is inside you need to add a bit more shadows then the ones which are outside right here you need to add a bit of highlights so that's a lot of work which we'll be doing in phases okay so let's get started right away first choose your colors and i'm going to use a bit of this pretty shade along with this pink i'm going to mix it intermittently to get different kind of you know vibrant shades i'll be painting two roses possibly placing one here and another one somewhere down here okay so let's get started first i am taking a bit of concentrated shade darker version of the shade and i am going to go with some c strokes at the center okay i'm just zooming in a bit adding a little bit of water because the brush, brush uh, became a bit dry and adding a bit more 
petals here and there everything in concentric circles okay i feel the center portion is fine right now this is kind of a uh, half an inch uh, diameter right now and i'm stopping with the first portion which is going to be the center of the flower now uh, that is going to be this area okay i need to say this particular portion is done now we'll be going with the second layer this outer section okay so for that again i'm going to use the same shade i'm mixing it a bit here and i'm going in right here okay so i'm starting it here and it's going to go all the way around and it will come back and overlap this petal right here so i'm going the other way around because i'm kind of not good at making circles with brush i hope this circle is good yeah okay so now i feel better with the circle right so next what i will do is i'm going to add a bit of a uh, purple shade to get a deeper darker kind of pink okay and i will add that right here here just to have a feeling that you know it's kind of a bit um inside okay right now i'll go back in again and i'm going to take my favorite pink which i have mixed here and i'm going to spread this color out like it's a petal right here okay that's a petal and here good right I'll add a bit more of color at the center for the gradient. Uh, it's always best to work when it is still wet because that way, you know, the color spreads on its own and it looks really better. Okay. Next, I want to add another um, layer. Okay, so you can see. Uh, this particular thing that we have drawn is going to have the outline till here okay this up till here this has been covered now it's a chance for the bigger of uh, petals which have almost unfurled okay they are going to be in the limelight right now so what i will do is since this is not a circle anymore you can see that the center has become somewhat towards the left so I will add this particular one like this okay to even out the shape of the circle now I feel that the center has come almost towards the center back again I will fill in this area later okay for the petal I like to go with a small uh, nudge over here okay then I'm going back in here I'm going to do the same everywhere like the petal has come like this and going in like this it's going in this way now since the first layer doesn't it look like the Dur Darshan symbol <laughs> yeah it does right Okay, so next what I'll do is I'm just going to add a bit more to give it a more symmetric or a better shape. Uh, it doesn't look that circular right now to me, so I'm adding a bit more shade at the edges. I think that's done. It, it will otherwise become too much of a big flower otherwise. Okay, so I'm done with that side as well. Um, so this middle portion is kind of dry right now. I'd like to go in with the next... Um, petal layer for which I'm just going to twist I mean turn it a bit because you know I'm painting this way right I want the next petal to engulf this one 
right here it will be like this it will widen over here and then come in here and then right back it will unfold right here that's how i want the second set of petals to be but i don't want it to be as wide as this i'm gonna have only like you know this much width over there let's see i'm mixing the same shades again now i'm gonna start right from here okay uh, let me just draw the circle first so that it's easier for me. This is the circle. Okay, I'm stopping it here because I feel the petal is otherwise going to be too long. And I'm going to make another overlapping petal right here. And maybe another one right here. Okay, and I'll just take diluted version of the color to spread out the petal a bit. exactly from a distance right now and uh, I think I'd add a bit of those darker shades uh, for the uh, shadow right here okay so this is how the petal is unfurling right here and it's coming here then you have another petal here and then there's another one right here overlapping this one okay and it ends right here. I'm adding a bit of lines here and there to fill in those spaces. Okay, next, um, next we can go in with these areas where we will be adding a bit more shadow now. This is the next uh, petal that we have, but uh, we don't have uh, contrast de depth right over here. So I'm going to go in again for the second layer. So here is where I'm going to change the color. Okay. So now doesn't it feel like, you know, there's some sort of depth right there. I think it looks better. Okay. And I'll do the same right here as well. It's going to be like a petal. I'm start here and it will go here. Okay. bit of lines here to just show that there are some petals here which are kind of closely placed okay and again going back to define these petals here now for the petals at the outermost area I'm just going to give some dark shades here after leaving a bit of gap okay that's all not working much on those areas also since this area is still wet I am adding a bit more colors and letting it spread out on its own
okay so now we have to uh, just let it completely dry for a while before we can go in with another one um because i feel that you know i took up a lot more of space right here than i anticipated so i think i'll stop with one flower and i'll add leaves over there so let's start working on the leaves right now i am taking the bigger brush because i feel um i don't want to take more strokes i, I mean i don't want to work with more strokes right now uh, for the leaves i will be taking this uh green here the palette green that is there i'm gonna mix it with a bit of this pink uh, orange shade whatever shade i have been using and i'll add in a bit of blue and a bit of yellow i think uh, this is the color that i want it to have okay so i add i'm definitely so this positioning of leaves is also something that has intrigued me for a long time and i still am not confident i feel like i spoil my flowers as soon as i add the leaves but uh, the general thing that i usually do while adding the leaves is to add uh, the leaves slightly and not exactly diagonally but somewhere um, diagonal okay so this area i cannot add anything other than leaves so this definitely is going to have some leaves so i'll add the leaves this way okay i'm adding a bit of a darker shade right here for the shadow and um, then I feel I'll add another leaf just next to it because I feel that the leaf looks a bit lonely right there. Okay, a bit of shadow. And then now diagonally opposite is here, but I think somewhere here would make it look really pretty. Sometimes symmetry isn't the beauty i feel like unsymmetrical things they look much more beautiful okay right there and adding some darker shades and i will come back with a bit more of green this time a different version of green with a less of yellow when I like to play with different shades of green, it kind of makes um, a good impression when you have different shades of green. It's kind of like, you know, natural how uh, the leaves naturally look in different shades of greens. Okay, so next I'd like to add a really, really lighter version of the leaf because I feel like, you know, this white is a bit too much white in the background so i randomly add some leaves in really really lighter shade and then uh, maybe some careless stems with some leaves maybe some other plant that is there in the backdrop something sort of that um here as well maybe I feel like I need a bolder leaf right here, something to just bring some sort of attention to the flower at the side. Okay. Okay, so now we can go back to the flower and fill in the rest of the details. A bit more of a shadow is required. I think so. Um, 
there is certain what to say even now the flower looks really uh, beautiful so if you feel if you feel that it's enough you can stop but i am the kind of person who doesn't know when to stop so i'm just going to go in with another layer because i just feel it could do a lot more better with another set of shadows so i'm just going to go in with that I'm taking the undiluted version of the strongest red shade that I have and I'm going with random strokes here. And I'm also trying to fill in all these gaps with darker shades like here, you see. If I add a bit of dark shade, it looks like it's another petal right at the background, right? So I'm doing that as well and I think that's it. Okay, now I'll dilute it a bit because the outer flowers are not as, I mean the outer petals weren't as dark as the inner ones. So I'm going in with a little bit softer shade and I'm just adding the same right here. Okay, so I'll move on to the next layer which is the outermost and I'll add a bit more color right here. As though it's another petal right here, okay? And here as well. stop there and now before I add some highlights what I usually do is I remove all the stark contrast shades um, I also think that there should be a bit more of the darker shade at the center because you know the depth isn't showing that much so I'm just adding a bit bit of that exact same darker shade that I mixed earlier I'm adding it at the center for a lot more of definition okay i let that to dry before i just run a wet brush along to uh, reduce the stark contrast here see all these white patches which were is there uh, what I like to do is just to run a wet brush without much water and blend in a bit of all those pink shades. I don't like that really white contrast. So I'm taking off all of that excess whites by rubbing a bit of water everywhere. feel like the center also needs a bit of that black okay so now that we have toned down all of those whites we can go back and work on the leaves and then we will be back by the time the flower dries we'll be back for uh, the final touches with the gouache we'll just add a bit more of details so i'm adding a bit of uh, green and blue in together and I'm going to define I need a bit more of a darker version of green yeah I think this is fine okay, I'm going in uh, to draw some sort of veins which I will tone down after some time I'm going 
to cut these leaves as well. I don't have any edges defined so I'm doing that as well. Okay, so I have a wet brush right now and I'm just rubbing in those shades to get it blended a bit more. I learned this trick when I was painting these points just last summer, I mean last uh, winter and it kind of looks gorgeous once you finish it okay i'll do that for these leaves as well I don't like this dark uh, background, so I'm just adding a bit of leaves here and there to tone it down. Okay, so we're done with the leaves as well. We need to go in with the last 
line on the leaves but before to that since the flower is dry what we're going to do now is to add some highlights this is the most favorite part and even if you don't add any highlights i think the flower looks beautiful as such but i just like to add a bit of a white gouache i'm using the brustro uh brustro brand white gouache and i'll mix it with a bit of water and i'm taking it on a really small brush and i will add highlights to all those portions which were earlier really light okay so i'm zooming in just to show you the close-up of what exactly i'm um, trying to do right here so if you remember i added uh this was our first dark patch which came this way and overlapped right here so wherever it had overlapped that means here is supposed to be the highlight okay so that's the gap that was there here as well there's to be a gap so that this dark shade looks even more prettier so here i have added a line and here so already uh, there are white patches so if we just need to kind of add a bit more white to get it highlighted a bit more so right here there is no white patch but i'd like to add a really thin going right above and here okay likewise this is the dark shade and this is the bifurcation right here so i'm adding a bit of white right there and i have added it this way okay likewise i'm going to do it here as well there are already white patches i'm just you know adding more color and making uh, the lines a bit more uh, circular or changing just the curvature whichever i feel that it might look better i'm just adding some shapes and defining something here so basically that is why i said that this step is a non-essential step but if you do it it's going to make it look really really nice I just feel that at some places when I add a little bit of white it kind of makes it look prettier so like at this edge this is where the petal ends and if I add a bit of white it makes it look like you know the petal is uh, kind of shining at the edges I think it comes with practice on um, you know where you want to put these sometimes it is just random strokes that I give but at the end when I look after a while I feel like that was a perfect position where I left head white. So it's more like unconsciously I'm putting some vice here and there but you know it is ending up looking really pretty. Okay so I think I have done enough of whites there and I'd like to now go back to the leaves and add in that final touch of green. So what I'm going to do is to just add that final touch of green here and there wherever I feel like, you know, it has washed off a bit more. And now what I'll do is whatever wash that I have mixed already for the highlights, I'm going to take a bit of that in a little bit more diluted version. I don't want a stark white over there. And I'm going to add at these veins and now against 
these shadows it's going to look really nice when it dries since i have diluted the white a lot more even though it looks really bright right now once it dries off it's going to be like you know really pale but still kind of you know giving a lot of definition every time i sit for a tutorial somehow i just end up messing it up but this time i think i have done really well and i hope that i also did well with this tutorial i hope you really really got the hang of what i was trying to say please do try this out yourself and let me know in the comment section as to where you got actually stuck or at what step do you think you could not do well as compared to how I was explaining? So maybe that could help me in kind of trying out that particular step, step a little bit more and trying to consciously understand what exactly I am doing while I'm doing that step. So um, I hope you really liked this session. Until next time um it's a bye, bye um if you like this content please 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 do consider subscribing to this channel um it because you know it takes a lot of effort to make uh, videos especially tutorial ones it's a lot of effort so anyways um thanks for watching see you another time bye, -bye.